Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of Off The Pedal and today's episode is going to be talking about the best modern classics for under £10,000. Now the term modern classic is obviously subjective, people have different definitions of what age of a car sort of classifies as a modern classic. But in today's video we're going to basically be looking at anything from 2005 back to around 1980. So yeah, it should be pretty interesting. I'm hoping there's going to be something for sort of everyone's taste. Um, but this is just five of what I think are some very, very good buys right at the minute. So number one is the Mark V Volkswagen Golf R32. Now this was launched back in 2005 and it features uh, Volkswagen's 3.2 litre VR6 engine. So basically VR6 is a very narrow angle V6. Um, so narrow in fact that both banks share the same cylinder head. So it's quite an interesting design. It's something that Volkswagen actually use quite a bit. Uh, they've got lots of different engines and they've always come out with some pretty interesting sort of engine setups and things. So yeah, it's quite a cool little piece. Um, in the Golf R32, it makes around about 250 horsepower, 236 pounds for a torque. Uh, so that gives it a 0 to 60 time of 6.5 seconds and a top speed of 155 miles an hour. Now it's quite cool because this was back in a time when you, you did have hot hatches with quite big engines and often six cylinder engines as well. And yeah, I just think that's something that we don't see as much these days. It definitely makes it quite unique and stands out. So the Mark V was available with basically, I think there was a six speed manual and a six speed DSG, uh, which is like Volkswagen's automatic, I think it was a dual clutch box in that application. So yeah, there's, there's a few different choices there. It was all wheel drive only. It's got that Haldex system. Uh, which is quite typical of the Volkswagen Group, of course, but you know what? It works pretty well. I actually think the Mark V is something that's aged, well, incredibly well, to be honest, considering it's now a 15-year-old model. Um, and yeah, I suppose probably this is because stuff like the Mark Seven actually looks very similar to the Mark V. Not much change in that sort of two or three generation jump. So it really doesn't look as old as you might think it would. And yeah, it's definitely a pretty cool little piece of kit. So yeah, I think it's a great buy. And here in the UK now, you can get some, some of the cheapest ones for around about 6,000 pounds. And for 10 grand, you'll get a pretty nice one with hopefully not too many miles on and something that's in pretty good shape. So yeah, if you're looking for something that's a little bit older, nice kind of like hot hatch feel, but something a bit more of the time when things were you know potentially more interesting and, and cool, the Mark V Golf R32 is definitely a good choice. So next on the list, I've got the 987 Porsche Cayman, which was launched back in 2005 as well. And I'm just going to be looking at the standard Cayman in this. Um, something like the Cayman S will set you back a little bit more, although not too much more. And I will get onto that in a few seconds. But yeah, so the 987 Cayman, the base one, came with a 2.7 litre flat six, which is obviously quite typical of Porsche. And it developed somewhere in the region of 245 horsepower, 201 foot pounds of torque, which, you know, you might think, ah, it's not that much, but... This only weighed 1300 kilos, so it is actually quite a decent power to weight ratio. Of course, the Cayman as well is mid-engine, which means you're going to get some pretty supreme handling. And I'm sure it'll be a fantastic car to take out either on a track or onto some nice roads. Uh, you've just got a really nice balanced sort of 50-50 weight distribution. So yeah, I, I think it's a really cool sort of package at that, at that price point because it is mid-engine and it's got a nice naturally aspirated engine as well. And obviously, flat sixes always sound cool. So it was available with either a five-speed manual or a PDK, which is a Porsche's double clutch gearbox. Um, it's a fantastic gearbox, to be honest, but I know if it was my choice, I'd definitely be looking for a manual. So yeah, it's, these are pretty cool. I think not to 60 on them was somewhere around the 6.1 second mark. Top speed was about 160 miles an hour. So it's by no means slow, even, even in today's world. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> 10 grand, it is pretty cool that you can get into these old Porsche Caymans and yeah, enjoy some of that mid-engine balance, I suppose. So in terms of price, um, there's not really much below 10K. You, you, you can get a few things, it's probably not gonna be the best, but around about the 10K mark, there was a few options when I was looking the other day um, with not too many miles on, they looked in pretty good shape. Obviously, if you spend a bit more, you are gonna get something that's nicer. And I think around about the 12 or 13 grand mark, you started to see a few of the uh, 987 Cayman S's coming in with that 3.4 liter flat six, which just developed a little bit more power. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's it's pretty good. And um, yeah, I, I would definitely be interested in buying something like, you know, that 987 generation Porsche Cayman with the flat six. I think that's a really cool option. Um, so yeah, if you're after that kind of like sports car sort of vibe, a um, bit of mid-engined, naturally aspirated flat six with a manual gearbox, the Porsche Cayman of the 987 generation is definitely a cool car to own. 
So next on the list is the Renault Sport Clio 172-182, and um, we'll get on to why there's basically two versions uh, in a few seconds, but the 172 was released in 2000, and it just offers quite a cool driver-focused little hot hatch. They made, well, as you can probably guess by the name, 172 horsepower, I think they were 148 foot-pounds of torque, and it was this phenomenal little two-litre naturally aspirated four cylinder with, you know, if, if you put an aftermarket intake on one of those engines, it's just some of the best induction noise you can possibly get. And you know, us petrol heads, we, we do like a bit of induction noise. It's definitely better than exhaust noise most of the time. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's a very lightweight car. I think uh, in its lightest form, maybe on some of the earlier models, it was around about 1,050 kilos. Uh, and the most, the heaviest ones I think were 1150. So, you know, you're talking around about a ton around about 160 horsepower per tonne, which is um, a pretty good uh, power to weight ratio. And obviously being so light, uh, they handle brilliant. There's, there's a reason why people use so many of these for track days and as their little track weapons to take out on weekends and things. And they're just so well set up for that. You can easily modify them. You can you know, beef up the, uh, beef up the brakes, suspension. You can put better wheels and tires on. There's a lot of cool things you can do. So in January 2004, they revised it, and there were a lot of revisions throughout its life. Um, but in 2004, they brought in the 182, which was basically a slightly uprated version of the same engine. I think the torque figure stayed exactly the same, but the power just went up by 10. So yeah, and I think they added some nicer exhaust tips on the rear as well. So it, looks, it looks a little bit sportier and actually a little bit more modern, I would say, as well. So yeah, but... In terms of which one would you choose, I mean, it's, it's totally up to you. I think the prices for the 172s were actually a little bit more expensive when I was looking, um, possibly because there were more 182s around. But to be honest, they are very similar cars. So, yeah, you can get in these from as little as a few thousand pounds um, for some of the higher mileage ones in not as good condition. But the closer you move to 10 grand, you're going to get some sort of better and better versions. You know, there's, there's the 182 Trophy and stuff as well. I can't remember specifically if any of those came in below 10, but you know, you're gonna be around about that mark. So yeah, it's a very cool little package, obviously front wheel drive. It's just, a, it's just a nice sort of reminder of when the French were making pretty cool hot hatches, these nice lightweight driver focused things. You've got that five speed manual box. Yeah, very, very cool. And they're so cheap. I mean, they use literally, they usually use plastic front wings. So, I mean, how cheap is that gonna to be to replace? And they're lightweight and yeah, very cool. So. If you are interested in a sort of a much lighter hot hatch, not quite sort of like an R32, which is heavier and all wheel drive and powerful. This is just a very light driver focus, probably very cheap to run. Um, yeah, this is a pretty damn good option, I would say, especially just for a few thousand pounds. So the fourth car we're gonna be looking at is the E36 BMW 328i Sport. Now, this is something quite interesting. It's, it's a little bit different, it's kind of, it takes a few features from the E36 M3 of the time, like styling cues, and it's obviously got the biggest M52 engine in it. So yeah, it came with the M52 B28, so it's a 2.8 litre inline six, naturally aspirated. This made about 193 horsepower and around about 207 foot-pounds of torque. So it's pretty decent. I think it only weighed about 1395 kilos, so it's not particularly heavy. Now, yeah, it was released in 1995, they did make a few revisions in 1996 as well, and the engine was revised in 1998. So in 1995, this is probably actually the year that you wanna go for if you're like looking for something a bit more driver focused because they fitted them with limited slip differentials, thicker anti-roll bars, Bilstein dampers. So it was pretty nicely set up. But in 1996, they introduced traction control and dropped the limited slip diff. So, you know, a bit, bit silly if you ask me, but you probably want to get that earlier one with the limited slip diff and all the cool little things on. But you might be interested in the fact that in 1998, they revised the M52 engine with the TU, which was the technical update. Now the original M52 in the E36 just had single Vanos, which was the variable valve timing that BMW produced on their M52 engines. And it was only on the intake camshaft, but in 1998, they changed it to double Vanos which is basically Vanos on the intake and exhaust camshaft. So that just helped to produce a little bit more torque lower down and uh, probably made the engine a bit more efficient as well. So there's kind of like a few things you've got to consider and probably some compromises you want to make in terms of the 328i Sport. There were other 328i's, but I quite like the way the Sport looks. There were, like I said, there were a few sort of design cues on them that made them look really cool. They had some nicer wheels. They had 
uh, sort of like a more aggressive front end and side skirts and rear bumper and some of them came with like a little spoiler as well. So yeah, they look pretty cool, the sports, and it's a great engine. The M52 sounds brilliant. Again, there's some pretty cool induction noise with those, especially if you fit an aftermarket intake. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. It's a great handling car. It's rear-wheel drive. I mean, what more do you want? It's just a really nice, simplistic sort of driver's car. And I think this was a thing. It, it developed slightly over the E30. Um, it, it is sort of a more grown-up car. It's properly transitioning into the 90s when you had a few more electronics. Things were just a little bit bigger and heavier. But it's not quite as sort of big and oversized as the E46. And don't get me wrong, I love the E46. But this is just like a more simplistic version of the, E30, of the E46. And I think it's, it's really cool kind of where it sits. There's not many of these about, the 328i Sports. And even E36s, to be honest, in the UK, there's not an absolute ton. So, yeah, you do have to look a bit. But I was looking on Auto Trader the other day. And there was a, there was a good three or four, I think, 328i Sports. And you can get into these from anywhere from around £5,000 for the cheapest ones with maybe about 100,000 miles on, right up to probably the nine or 10 grand mark for something with sub 100,000 miles and in pretty nice shape and well maintained. So, you know, there's a bit of scope on the budget there and you, you could sort of pick something that's maybe not as good and do it up, make it into a track car. There's a few people doing that, of course. But yeah, I just really love the idea of sort of a 2.8 litre inline six rear wheel drive driver's car. I think that's really, really cool. And at the price point, yeah, it's not bad at all, is it? Just for five, five grand and up. So yeah, that could be a very good option to consider. So the last one on the list, and of course this had to be done because it's me, is the E13. You can see I've got mine sat behind me here. And yeah, I just think this has got to be one of the best modern classics about these days. They are just so fun. It virtually doesn't matter which engine you buy. There's, there's just so many different options and whatever you get, it's gonna be fun to drive. It's gonna be cool to own. Yeah, and people are gonna appreciate them as well. So. Like I say, there's, there were so many different engines on the E30, anything from the sort of the 316i all the way up to the 325i, and then of course you've got the M3 with that S14. So there's just so many different things that you can choose, and there really is something for everyone. You've got all the different body styles, you've got the Tourings, you've got the four-door saloons, the two-door saloons, you've got the convertibles, there's just, yeah. So you can take your pick, you can pick what you like, basically. There are some things that obviously fetch a premium, and some of the standout cars from the range have got to be, well, the E30 M3, if you can afford one, they're like 50 grand. So, you know, we'll, we'll exclude that from this list. But in terms of like the normal models, you've got things like the 318 IS with that M42 engine. Uh, this had a dual overhead cam, which was quite advanced for the time. It was the most advanced engine in the E30, really, in terms of its sort of technicalities. And that made about 136 horsepower and 127 foot pounds. And of course, you've got the 325i with that M20 B25 engine. And this, in its most powerful form, made 171 horsepower and 164 foot pounds of torque. So those figures aren't like staggeringly high, but what you've got to remember is these cars only weigh sort of 1200 kilos, sometimes less actually. So yeah, it's quite a bit of power for the weight. They do feel faster than you probably think they would as well. So I wouldn't really be worried about power. This is, this is much more a driver's car. This is very, it's lightweight, it's nimble, agile. It's extremely engaging, especially if you get a manual gearbox. So yeah, there's just so many cool things that you can do with these. As I've said in other videos, people will make these into track cars, fast street cars. Some people keep them original, which is what I'm planning to do. Rally cars, there's just so many sort of different things you can do with them and the platform is so good for that. Now, the E30 prices are kind of going up. Um, actually quite surprising how much they go up sometimes. I do kind of check every now and then, see what's for sale, see what's going. And yeah, you can still get in them for probably like one or 2,000 pounds, but you know, be prepared for rust, be prepared for it to probably be a 318 or something. Um, so it's not gonna be the most desirable models. <clears throat> but as you move further up the price range, you could probably get a pretty nice 318 IS, I would think, for maybe nine or 10,000. Of course, there's plenty of 320Is, like what I've got, uh, below the 10,000 pound mark. The 325Is, it really depends which model you're going for. I think some of the 325i saloons, you can probably get seven or 8,000 pounds. But if you're looking for a 325i Sport, which is arguably sort of the most desirable model below the E30 M3, um, be prepared to pay well in excess of 10 grand. I've, I've seen nice models of those going in excess of 20,000 pounds nowadays. So yeah, it, you know, th there's basically an E30 for everyone, as I say, and you can kind of pick your price and find the car. So yeah, it's definitely, yeah, I, I very much enjoy owning mine, as you can probably tell. 
Um, I do think it's a really exciting kind of car to drive and I, I always look forward to going out on it wherever I'm going. And um, yeah, they, they're appreciated by people. It is a proper modern classic these days. So of course the E30 was going to be on this list. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's again, something a little bit different. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.